Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into a masterclass on wind shear. In today's tutorial, we'll explore the following. How wind shear can dramatically affect aircraft performance during takeoff and landing. The deadly dangers of microbursts and how to spot them before it's too late. And essential recovery techniques pilots need to survive sudden wind shifts in critical flight phases. So, what exactly is wind shear? Wind shear refers to sudden and drastic changes in wind velocity and or direction over a short distance. These rapid changes can occur at different levels in the atmosphere and can be severe enough to affect an aircraft's performance. We usually categorize wind shear into two main types, vertical and horizontal shear. Vertical wind shear happens when there's a change in wind velocity along the vertical axis. Think of the aircraft climbing or descending through different layers of wind. This often occurs near thunderstorms or mountain waves, and it can be very challenging to handle, especially during critical phases of flight like takeoff or landing. Horizontal wind shear, on the other hand, involves changes in wind direction or speed along the horizontal axis. For example, a shift from a headwind to a tailwind or vice versa. These changes can be pretty dramatic, sometimes up to 100 knots per nautical mile, and can drastically affect the aircraft's lift and airspeed, making the flight dynamics unpredictable. The danger with wind shear is that it's most hazardous at low altitudes, where the aircraft is most vulnerable. During takeoff and landing, rapid changes in wind can cause a loss of speed or altitude, which is why it's crucial for pilots to understand how to handle these situations properly. When it comes to wind shear, early detection is essential. So, how do we identify it? Here are some signs to look out for. A sudden change in indicated airspeed of more than 15 knots. Significant variations in ground speed. Shifts in wind direction or speed on the analog wind indicator. Vertical speed changes exceeding 500 feet per minute. Fluctuations in pitch attitude of more than 5 degrees. Glide slope deviations of more than 1 dot. Heading changes greater than 10 degrees. Or unusual behavior from auto thrust systems. So. How can pilots prevent wind shear encounters? The most effective approach is to detect and avoid it. There are several tools available to help with this. Firstly, there are weather reports and forecasts. Airports equipped with systems like the low-level wind shear alerting system or terminal Doppler weather radar can help detect wind shear. ATC can relay this information to pilots, helping them steer clear of danger zones. Next, we have pilot reports, known as PIREPs. Sometimes other pilots' first-hand observations can be the most accurate source of information. Reports of wind shear exceeding 20 knots or strong downdrafts are critical for identifying dangerous areas. However, pilots must use these with caution, as wind shear conditions can change rapidly. Finally, we have the onboard weather detection functions. The A320 is equipped with reactive and predictive wind shear detection systems. These systems monitor both vertical and horizontal wind velocities, and if sudden changes occur, the system will activate. The predictive wind shear function on the A320 provides real-time warnings of wind shear conditions ahead of the aircraft. Pilots should use this to stay ahead of any potential issues. If activated, you'll hear a warning on the cockpit speakers saying, wind shear ahead, and an amber wind shear ahead caution will appear on the primary flight display. The reactive wind shear system is a combination of the wind shear detection system and the speed reference system. This system offers an immediate response to wind shear conditions by adjusting aircraft parameters in real time to help us respond more effectively. If activated, you'll hear a warning on the cockpit speakers saying wind shear three times, and a red wind shear warning will appear on the primary flight display. Now, 
let's talk about microbursts, the most dangerous type of wind shear. A microburst is a small but incredibly powerful downdraft of air. This air rapidly descends to the ground and spreads out in all directions, creating a ring vortex. Microbursts usually form near thunderstorms, and the wind shifts they cause can drastically affect an aircraft's ability to maintain flight stability. Here's what you need to know about them. Their sizes are typically less than 2.5 nautical miles in diameter. The downdraft intensity can exceed 40 knots, which is around 4,000 feet per minute, while horizontal winds can range from 45 to 100 knots. The duration of a microburst usually lasts only around 15 minutes. They're often linked to thunderstorms, heavy rainfall, or dust devils. But even if you don't see these visual indicators, microbursts can still pose a serious risk. Microbursts present a dual threat to aircraft. First, they produce a downburst, where powerful downdrafts force the aircraft downward, potentially exceeding the aircraft's climb capabilities. Secondly, the outburst causes a shift in wind direction, transforming a headwind into a tailwind. This shift can decrease the aircraft's lift and reduce its airspeed, forcing the aircraft down and making recovery difficult, especially during takeoff or landing. An aircraft encountering a microburst during takeoff or landing will experience three distinct and perilous phases of wind conditions that can seriously affect flight performance. Phase one is the headwind. In the first phase, the aircraft encounters a strong headwind gust, which initially increases the aircraft's speed and lift. This forces the plane to climb higher than the intended flight path, potentially causing a dangerous altitude deviation and throwing the aircraft off course. The pilot may initially believe the conditions are favorable, but this rapid change is only the beginning of the threat. Phase two is the downdraft. As the aircraft continues into the microburst, it suddenly enters the downdraft, a violent downward air current that causes the aircraft to lose altitude rapidly. The rapid descent increases the aircraft's angle of attack, and the pilot will struggle to regain the correct flight path. The loss of altitude can happen very quickly, making recovery difficult, especially at low altitudes during takeoff or landing. Phase three is the tailwind. This final phase introduces a tailwind gust, which reduces the aircraft's lift and further decelerates the aircraft, increasing the downward force on the plane. This sudden loss of lift can cause the aircraft to descend uncontrollably, making recovery near impossible without immediate corrective action. The tailwind gust can also significantly alter the plane's speed and trajectory, adding to the complexity of the situation. This shifting combination of headwind, downdraft, and tailwind creates a highly unpredictable and dangerous scenario. The aircraft can be pushed off course, lose altitude rapidly, and struggle to recover, especially during critical phases of flight like takeoff and landing, posing a significant threat to flight safety. The predictive wind shear function in the A320 utilizes the weather radar, scanning five nautical miles ahead with a 60-degree arc radius. It is only active below 100 knots on the ground, and again between 50 feet and 2,300 feet in flight. However, on newer variants, this has been reduced to 1,800 feet. Here are some best practices to handle predictive or reported wind shear during takeoff, approach, and landing. For wind shear predicted or reported at takeoff, delaying the takeoff becomes crucial. If you suspect wind shear is on the horizon, it's often best to delay takeoff until conditions improve. Microbursts don't last long, so a few minutes of waiting can let things settle down and make sure you're not facing dangerous conditions right from the start. Next, select the right runway. If you've got a choice, pick a runway that's less likely to put you in the path of wind shear. Coordinate with ATC to plan the most favorable route, considering things like wind direction. Also, consider using toga thrust. Don't be shy about using maximum takeoff thrust. This gives you the power to push through any gusty or unpredictable wind conditions that might pop up during takeoff. And finally, monitor any speed trends. Keep an eye on your airspeed and any sudden changes. Unexpected speed fluctuations can be a sign of wind shear, so staying alert is key.
for wind shear predicted or reported during descent and approach, consider delaying your approach or even diverting to another airport. It's better to take a bit more time and fly to a safer location than to rush into a dangerous situation. Next, choose a favorable approach path. When you're working with ATC, try to plan an approach that minimizes your chances of running into wind shear. If you've got the weather radar operational, consider manually surveying the weather to spot any potential hazards ahead. For the approach, consider adjusting your approach speed. If it's gusty or you're expecting wind shear, don't hesitate to increase your VAP a little to help you handle those unexpected wind changes. And finally, use autopilot if it's available. If there's an ILS approach, think about using the autopilot as much as possible to help you stay on course. It can take some of the workload off your shoulders and ensure more accurate tracking. Plus, for most aircraft variants, the autopilot will assist in performing the wind shear escape maneuver if you end up encountering it. The reactive wind shear system in the A320 relies on both the angle of attack vanes and the flight augmentation computers. It remains inactive on the ground, but activates three seconds after liftoff, staying active until 1,300 feet above the ground. During landing, the system becomes active again below 1,300 feet and remains so until 50 feet above the ground. In all cases, the system requires a minimum of flaps one. When encountering severe wind shear, the aircraft needs to maintain enough energy to navigate through the loss of performance phase. This energy can be preserved in a few key ways. First, increasing speed is essential, as the aircraft automatically adjusts its speed in managed mode during the approach phase using Ground Speed Mini, ensuring the aircraft maintains the necessary energy for recovery. Maximizing thrust is also critical, with the system automatically selecting maximum thrust with alpha floor protection, even if TOGA is already active. However, once alpha floor protection is no longer needed, it's important to disconnect auto thrust. Lastly, converting altitude into speed is a technique that can be applied across all aircraft to help mitigate performance loss during a wind shear encounter. Proper techniques are vital for executing these recovery measures efficiently. In the takeoff phase, if wind shear is detected, whether by the radar or visually, V1 may be reached later than expected. Pilots must use their judgment to determine if there is enough runway remaining to abort the takeoff if necessary. If significant airspeed variations are noticed before V1, and the pilot deems there's enough runway to abort, then rejecting the takeoff is the best course of action. After V1, pilots should set toga thrust and rotate the aircraft at the calculated rotation speed. If the flight directors offer SRS guidance for wind shear recovery, pilots should follow the pitch instructions. Otherwise, they should set the recommended pitch attitude of 17.5 degrees, as per the FCOM memory items. The configuration should not be changed, such as raising the gear or flaps, until out of the wind shear. During the initial climb, approach, or landing phases, if wind shear is detected, immediate recovery actions must be taken. Pilots should set the thrust levers to toga. If the autopilot is engaged and offers recovery guidance, it should remain engaged. If not, the autopilot should be disengaged, and the pilot should follow the flight director commands for pitch or manually adjust the pitch as before. The autopilot can fly the wind shear maneuver, providing that the angle of attack does not exceed alpha protection. Leveling the wings is crucial for achieving the best possible climb gradient unless turning is necessary for obstacle clearance. Because the A320 has a fly-by-wire system, pilots can apply full backstick input to prevent altitude loss. Continuous monitoring of airspeed, trends, and flight path angle is essential. Once safely clear of wind shear, the aircraft should be allowed to accelerate and normal climb procedures should resume, with the aircraft returning to a clean configuration once the situation stabilizes. Be aware that alpha floor can often engage, so when clear of the wind shear, remember to disconnect the aircraft out of toga lock to avoid overspeeding. So, just to summarize, 
Understanding the appropriate recovery techniques for each phase of flight is vital when wind shear is detected. In any phase, maximizing thrust to toga is essential for recovering performance. Proper pitch management, following the flight director's commands or manually adjusting the aircraft's attitude is also crucial for regaining control. Speed management is particularly important to avoid stall conditions, and pilots should always monitor airspeed and promptly react to any variations. Finally, altitude considerations must be taken into account, especially during initial climb or approach. We should be prepared to trade altitude for speed, but aim to minimize altitude loss and remain mindful of any altitude restrictions. Our popular A320 tech quizzes are now part of an exclusive newsletter membership designed to provide you with even more value. As a member, you'll receive four brand new A320 tech quizzes every month, one each Monday, delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also receive exclusive deep dives into A320 systems, procedures, and techniques that go beyond this YouTube content. And you'll also gain access to bonus content and other surprises to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. If you're interested, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to sign up today. Thanks for tuning in, and let's take your A320 knowledge to the next level. Thank you.